Just like you, I grew up with Lindsay Lohan. As a young child, I was shocked to find out she wasn't really twins in the parent trap. I spent all day one Christmas listening to her iconic debut album, Speak. I literally cried in the movie theater watching Mean Girls because I was so overwhelmed with how iconic the whole thing was. I'm a Pisces, okay? But somewhere along the way, the narrative shifted. The once wholesome teeny bopper took the tabloid world by storm, going on one of the most intense downward spirals we saw in the 2000s. But this video isn't about that era. It's about what came next, and that was Lindsay's docuseries on OWN. The series was billed as Lindsay launching her comeback after some bad press, but what we got was definitely not that, but it was an unprecedented look into the reality of 2000s era superstardom, as well as an insight into addiction. I've been obsessed with the show since it aired and have watched like five times through, so I thought it would be fun to analyze this incredible reality TV hidden gem. So the biggest question I have from the series is why would she do this? To back up a little, let's lay out what was going on in Lindsay's life as the series came to be. The year was 2013 and her reputation was really in the gutter at this point, after a string of arrests and stays in rehab. There was constant drama with her parents also dealing with legal issues, as well as drama with other tabloid stars such as Paris Hilton. Though she'd once been touted for her acting talent, she hadn't really done anything all that big in recent years, mostly doing bit parts playing herself or starring in movies that weren't received well by critics. She'd earned herself a reputation for being very hard to work with. She was still very much relevant, though almost exclusively for her bad girl antics. This was kind of a vicious time in pop culture where people like gossip blogger Perez Hilton reigned. We're pre Me Too, pre Free Britney, and the general public is still eager to think the worst of a troubled former child star. That spring, one of Lindsay's peers, Amanda Bynes, had had a very public meltdown, which was pretty clearly a manic episode, but she found herself the butt of jokes about the whole thing. People were hungry for more. Around the same time, the television channel, the Oprah Winfrey Network, aka own was still in its toddler years still trying to find itself and figure out its identity the network wasn't exactly thriving at least as far as i could tell from skimming their wikipedia page but an exception to this was oprah's own show oprah's next chapter where she do her oprah thing conducting revealing interviews with celebrities humanizing them in that special way she can one of the subjects was of course our Lindsay, and it was decided that after the interview cameras would keep rolling on her life as she made the move from los angeles to new york with the hopes of reviving her stalling acting career all while fresh out of rehab. This takes us to our first major theme of the series, which is sobriety. This is kind of the guiding force of the series, with the central question seeming to be, is Lindsay sober? Time has passed on the show by how long Lindsay's been out of rehab, which feels a little, I don't know, disrespectful. In her initial interview with Oprah, she's very honest about her addiction, and throughout the show, we see her saying all the right things about what she needs to be doing to stay on the straight and narrow. She's assisted by Michael. No, not that Michael. Hey, but another Michael, who is contracted as her sober coach, but who has to kind of act as her spokesperson and translator in a sense. It's not too long into the series before Lindsay starts causing headaches for production, not wanting to film certain things, or refusing outright to film, and on more than one occasion, we see him having to explain why she's acting the way she is, at least as it applies to a newly sober person. This amount of pressure and change, it's like rule number one to avoid. He seems to have the distinction of being one of the few people Lindsay trusts and respects to some degree, and she seems genuinely upset when he has to go home halfway through the series. He offers some really great insight into the nature of addiction. Addiction is a very self-centered thinking disease because it's always like, am I comfortable? Am I comfortable now? Am I comfortable now? Am I comfortable now? And gives us the best rationale for Lindsay's behavior, which grows more and more off-putting as the series progresses. He's asked about her sobriety when he leaves, and he can't say for certain what the truth is, but very diplomatically cast out. I have no hard evidence that she's not. Around this time, the tabloids catch her with a bottle of wine, and while she explains this away, she does admit that she did have a glass of wine with her partner, of whom we never hear more about. I kind of have a theory on this, I'll get to later. But we see her wrestle with the fact that she did have a slip up and that she has to forgive herself and move on. It seems that a lot of people aren't really buying this, including AJ, a life coach of sorts who has been trying her hardest to keep Lindsay on track to varying degrees of success. While Lindsay had been really into the relationship, even considering them friends, she cuts her off completely when AJ questions her sobriety on camera. This is kind of tricky. On one hand, I get Lindsay being upset that this was brought up on camera. She says she was okay with AJ asking her about this, though I'm not really sure that that's true, but she felt betrayed by her bringing it up on camera. 
Instagram. She talks about how private and personal her sobriety is, which is fair under normal circumstances, but in this situation, it's a little dicey because it's what the whole show is being framed upon. The Oprah interview is all about it, and again, they're literally passing the days on the show by how long she's been out of rehab. But on the other hand, this is Lindsay's real life, and if I was her, I'm not sure I'd want to discuss this either, especially so early on in sobriety when she's still trying to get her bearings. But as AJ points out, Lindsay said her goal was to be open and honest, and this was something she wasn't being honest about. There's also the accountability factor and not wanting to enable an addict to partake in harmful activities and stopping her before she slipped all the way. But again, on the other hand, is it the public's business whether she's held accountable in her sobriety? I guess kind of, since she's making this reality show. I think the real problem is that this was just so fresh. Lindsay is four days out of rehab when the initial Oprah interview is shot, and we see her still very much in a therapy type of mode, echoing the things I'm sure her counselors were saying. Plus, the show points out that this was court-ordered rehab. Lindsay didn't have a come-to-Jesus moment and decide she needed to get help. She was legally obligated to attend treatment. I'm sure we all know that sobriety or treatment of any kind is not going to stick unless the person themselves wants it. And while I think there truly was a part of Lindsay that wanted it, I think there was also a part of her that just wasn't ready, so of course it didn't stick the way she, or at least others, may have hoped. Along the way, we also hear echoes of her parents' struggles with sobriety as well. She talks at length about how her father's drug use negatively impacted her as a child, and he even makes jokes about the situation as well. Vodka pizza. Do we have to go to an AA meeting? <laughs> We're done. I do anyway. <laughs> There's also some weirdness with her mom, Dina. She gets a DUI during filming, and Lindsay throws her under the bus when AJ brings up Lindsay having wine at the apartment. Something else I've noticed is that Dina seems almost, like, materialistic about Lindsay's stays in rehab. She makes a point to name drop all of the fabulous rehab centers she's been at. During Lindsay's treatment, initially it was Betty Ford, um, and then she was in Clipside, and we would talk with counselors all the time. Which kind of points at how highly valued brand names and luxury are in the Lohan family. You kind of see why Lindsay is the way she is when you look more at her parents. A few episodes into the series, her sobriety starts getting questioned. We never see totally sloppy behavior where there's no doubt that she's on something, but we do get some curious footage, especially the footage Lindsay shot herself. Almost from the minute they began shooting, Lindsay started being really difficult to the production crew, demanding that they leave her apartment and not shoot certain scenes, or just outright refusing to film despite the fact that they are all assembled outside of her apartment. She wouldn't let them tag along on trips she was taking, and there was fear that there wouldn't be enough footage to edit the show. So I guess as a compromise, they gave Lindsay a camera of her own, and she made some odd choices with what she chose to show. At one point, she films herself at 7 in the morning with four dudes playing a game of dare, where one of them is piercing his ear with a knife. We also get this footage where she stares into the camera and smokes cigarettes inside. I think it was meant to convey depth and depression and loneliness, but it came off just kind of strange. The footage was used to open an episode, and it was just very jarring to me. I also kind of felt like production almost wanted to expose her. For example, Lindsay has a dental emergency at one point and wants to get sedated to have the work done to fix it. It's made very clear that the sedation is not necessary but Lindsay's choice, and both she and the dentist are asked if this poses a relapse risk. While I understand how frustrated they were by Lindsay's outright inconsideration of their time and money, they made that very clear, this is just such a sensitive issue that the whole thing feels a little weird. I think it was obviously a terrible idea to start filming a troubled starlet literal days after she left rehab, all in the midst of moving to another state. What did they think was going to happen? But I guess nobody had that foresight and they'd already invested so much time, money, and cachet into the show that they just had to keep it moving and do the best they could. Lindsay obviously came off terribly in this. We saw constant scenes of her being rude and manipulative. She had no respect for others besides maybe Oprah and a small handful of others. And while there's not a need to put a bow on her disrespect and edit around it, in hindsight, the whole thing seems so exploitative. Another huge aspect of the show was the role fame plays in Lindsay's life. The show makes it clear that she's a paparazzi favorite, as they are present in many of the establishing shots on the show. We see her trying to escape them, notably when she's doing a photo shoot on the street, and gets really upset when they capture footage from it. Her poor assistant, Matt, we'll get to him, tries to pay the guy off, but the photo guy is just not interested, as a picture of Lindsay goes for way higher than anything in Matt's pocket. Got Lindsay! Got her! We even start to see the same paparazzi guys again and again, and one even gets an interview of his own. They're, they are their own worst enemies. They keep making stories for us to follow. The reality is they just keep failing. And every time they fail, there's a new story. There's a new reason to chase them. 
this whole business is strange. You always hear that the stars love it and it gives them attention. And while I do think there's truth to that, you can also see how scary it can be. One guy jumps in front of the windshield as Lindsay is leaving an event. And like, first of all, personal space, dude. And second, isn't he worried that he would get hit by the car? It's just madness. And while of course I knew this must be crazy to deal with, Lindsay's docuseries shows just how inescapable it is. At one point, she's wanting to go to an AA meeting, but they're camped out outside of her apartment and she's worried about them following her into a meeting, which wouldn't be fair to the other attendees, so she just doesn't go. I wonder what the presence of paparazzi constantly in your life would do to someone psychologically. Well, I'm sure in the beginning, it's kind of cool and a marker that you've truly made it, but when it's just constant and all out unavoidable, it's got to just mess with your head completely, especially when it's weaponized against you. Lindsay talks about them taking photos of her sneezing and turning it into headlines about her crying, and that's just got to be like outrageous to deal with constantly. Throughout the duration of filming, there are several tabloid stories that come out about her. Lots trying to catch her drinking, of course, but there's also one that happens when she takes a trip to Miami that she doesn't let production film. Some sort of fight broke out between Lindsay's friends and Baron Hilton, Paris's younger brother, who claimed that Lindsay had ordered the quote-unquote hit on him. I guess it was a semi-scandal of sorts at the time, and I thought it was kind of interesting that we got Lindsay's perspective on the thing as the show was filming. Of course, it's hard to completely trust what she's saying, as she loses credibility as the series progresses, but seeing her try to draft a statement and stressing about the situation was such a fascinating peek behind the curtain of a celebrity going through a scandal. We also get her take on classic pop culture stories, such as the tale of the bling ring, in which a bunch of teenagers, including the infamous Alexis Nyers, robbed the homes of celebrities celebrities in the 2000s, including Lindsay. Lindsay drops a bomb when she tells us that when she went to jail, Alexis was in the pod next to her and was released early as obviously it would be awkward if the two were to run into each other. If you guys want to see a video on Alexis's show Pretty Wild, let me know as I think that'd be really fun to make. Another aspect of celebrity we see on the show is the entourage. Lindsay's got a lot of hangers-on and people that work for her in some capacity. Let's start with Matt, Lindsay's intrepid assistant. Since Lindsay often refuses to be on camera, he kind of ended up as the star of the show. They honestly could have repackaged the whole thing into the assistant diaries or something because we got so much Matt here. We find out that he hasn't been with Lindsay for too long. Some googling led me to learn that he was actually hired as a condition of her doing the show, which kind of makes sense as it's clear that they are newly working with each other. We see him grow more and more frustrated that he can't get any time with her. It's hard to read whether he likes working for Lindsay or not, and I think the answer changes from moment to moment. At some points, he's on the verge of quitting. She reams him out completely one day for like no reason. I can't be present for you. I, need I can't be present me, for I need, myself. I need to get answers Excuse from me. you so I can get stuff done for you. Right, and you just got a list of things to do. Yeah, we're still at it. Right, you don't have right. to be disrespectful. I'm not. Which is so odd, like, doesn't she see the camera? This doesn't make you look good, Linz. He also tries to cater to her absurd demands, such as when she wants movers to dig through the packed truck of all of her stuff that she made them reload to find a single fitted sheet. Like, can she not just go buy another one? They're not that expensive. But sometimes they seem in lockstep, and by the end of the season, he seems kind of protective of her, fighting back against rumors that he quit because she couldn't pay him, and talks about how proud he is of all that they've accomplished. If anything, I hope this show is a major resume booster for him, because if he can work with Lindsay in the stage in her life, he could honestly work with anyone. Another person who seems to have been hired on is AJ, who I mentioned in the sobriety section. She's hired as a life and wellness coach for Lindsay, taking her to exercise, trying her best to help Lindsay create healthy routines, Routines, and asking probing questions to get her to have aha types of moments. Candlelight or electricity? Candlelight. For a while, Lindsay really lets her in, and we start to see a lot of AJ until the whole sobriety thing comes up, and Lindsay totally ices her out, leaving her crying and getting into a taxi, never to be seen again. This is a shame, as AJ was kind of a fun person to have around, providing the only moment of sheer comedy in the whole series when she decides it's a good idea to light a bunch of candles while the movers are all over Lindsay's apartment with a bunch of cardboard boxes. A fragrant candle, amongst all this craziness, can make all the difference in the world. The in and out is kind of a pattern. She has another assistant for like an episode, this girl named Holly, who really has no idea what's going on, only to be fired for drinking wine in front of Lindsay. We see a slew of friends, some of whom seem to be horrible influences, as much as she maintains that she doesn't care if people are drinking around her. I'm so curious about these people. Like, how did they meet Lindsay? How close are these friendships? We never get to hear too much from any of these people, and it seems that they often change. Though we do get two glimpses of Vladimir, aka the dude who pierces ear with a knife, as Lindsay invites him to Jingle Ball to introduce Miley Cyrus, where she doesn't get to chat with Miley herself, despite wanting to. Production made sure to include a scene of her asking Matt to ensure Miley tweets her back at least. They really seem to hate her. 
We do get a few celeb sightings, however, with Oprah, obviously, who interviews Lindsay twice. We actually get to see a very irritated Oprah when she's briefed on Lindsay blowing off filming so much, and see her do her thing, interviewing both Lindsay and her mother, Dina. We also get to see Jimmy Fallon, who she films a skit with, Billy Eichner, who she majorly annoys by showing up super late to film Billy on the street, and we see Floyd Mayweather when the two host a Halloween party, which she is also late for. The show does pay homage to the incredible career she's had, putting into context just how prolific her acting career was in her younger days. Which takes us to the other big quest that guides this series, her attempt at a comeback. In the first episode, we see Lindsay move from Los Angeles to New York in an attempt to get away from the party girl image and start fresh and get back to her acting roots. The move is actually a huge story in and of itself, showing this chaotic life she's lived living in hotels and jumping through hoops, or rather, making Matt jump through hoops to find her an apartment that works for her. But anyway, she talks at length about the joy being on set brings her and really feels like she's been acting out because she's not feeding her creative soul, which is fulfilled through acting. She goes back and forth between understanding and not understanding that despite her talent, which she genuinely has, she's too much of a liability for any production to cast her in a role. She opens up about this frustration on multiple occasions, but her behavior on the show really does nothing to calm the mind of any future film producer who may be watching this series. She talks about wanting to be serious about her acting, but then sleeps through a meeting AJ had set up for her in LA. She chooses not to do press for the film she just shot prior to the series, The Canyons, understandably not wanting to throw herself into a situation that might put her sobriety at risk, but it's pretty telling when the director opens up his discussion at a film festival with this. For the last 18, 16 months, I have been a hostage um, by my own choosing to a um, very talented but unpredictable actress. We see her do a bunch of photo shoots, and despite her being a genuinely great model and a skilled stylist, she's just a nightmare to work with. There's one photo shoot for Elle Indonesia that takes three tries. The first because she outright no-called, no-showed. The second, she was too late for the photographer who only shoots with natural light to shoot. And their impromptu plan B of shooting while walking down the street gets thwarted when the paparazzi finds them, causing Lindsay to flee. She's also late for try three, which is baffling as it literally takes place at her apartment, which again messes up the photographer because the sun has once again set before Lindsay is ready, so he has to use natural light, which is not what the shoot entailed. She's supposed to have another photo shoot early on, but she refuses to do it because lines were added at the last minute, and she doesn't like the direction of the story, causing her to get in a fight with the director. We see this happen on many occasions, where she just has no consideration that other people are at work and she's wasting a whole crew's time and money because of her moods and whims. I'm not sure if she just didn't realize that the consequences of her antics had such an effect outside of herself or if she didn't care. It would be interesting to see if any sort of self-reflection occurred after watching the series back, but it's just draining for those around her. We see so many times people being excited and eager to meet her, only to be totally worn out by her and end up vowing to never work with her again, be it creative directors, photographers, or even moving companies. What's just baffling to me is that she was very well aware that all of this was being filmed and had participated in this project in an effort to change her image, yet was confirming every negative story about how she behaved on sets. The stories have been floating around about her acting this way for years, and instead of taking this opportunity to prove that she had changed and matured, she gave video evidence that it's all true. She does have one project in the pipeline, however, a film called Inconceivable, being financed by Randall Emmett, noted enemy of 50 Cent and ex-fiance of Lala Kent from Vanderpump Rules. This makes up a lot of the story in the back half. She meets with the producer of the movie, a woman named Hillary, not Duff, unfortunately, she never mentions her, but this Hillary gets prodded by production to talk about her hesitancy to work with Lindsay, but she says she's not deterred. With Randall, there's kind of a weird subtext. He seems to be one of the only people Lindsay really respects and looks up to, and she's very eager to be in his company. She goes out to LA, not letting production film it, solely to meet with him. I don't know if there was anything more than a business relationship between the two of them, but there's enough question marks around the situation to make me kind of wonder. But the two announce Inconceivable together at Sundance, and she ends the series looking forward to this being her big jump back into acting, although she ended up not being in the movie, and when it finally was made, it was absolutely panned, so obviously that didn't work out so well. So this leads me back to my original question of why would Lindsay possibly agree to do this docuseries? By episode 3, she seems to be asking herself this very question. I guess the obvious answer is the payday. She reportedly received $2 million along with two assistants. I'm not sure if the second was AJ, but in another role, or Holly? Though I guess that report could also just be a rumor. And I guess even to someone who's been making millions since she was a teenager, two million could be a big payday, but we also see her make $100,000 just for hosting one Halloween party, so would it be worth it to have your life exposed in that way when it's so easy for you to make money? We do see that she has a taste for luxury, buying a bunch of designer clothes at a consignment shop when she was supposed to be selling what she already had to make space in her apartment. 
and she also spent a lot of her life living in fancy hotels, plus with all of her legal fees. I have to imagine she wasn't saving all the money she made growing up. Maybe she really did need the money and didn't realize what a big commitment she was making. I think for Lindsay, this was a huge mistake. She was way too early on in her sobriety to have such a huge magnifying glass put on it for everyone's judgment and really wasn't in a good headspace to bring more chaos into her life. She also reveals at the end of taping that she suffered a miscarriage while filming, but that wasn't communicated until a wrap-up interview that was taped after the show was airing, so production didn't seem to have the time to allow her to explore this or offer empathy with their editing. This didn't produce a comeback in any way, really. It just made people have clear evidence on why not to hire her. She has really faded from cultural relevance since about this time. She eventually moved to Dubai and seems to have really embraced Middle Eastern culture, having an accent for a stint. This is just me holding it with me walking, going. Whereas the paparazzi may be across the street, I didn't know. And they crucified me for it. And trying to kidnap a Syrian child one night while on Instagram Live. And you should be doing what you do for your children so they have a better life. And if someone's offering them a home and a bed, which is me at this moment, give it to them seemingly getting decked by the child's mother. She has had two comeback flare-ups of sorts, first with her other reality show, Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club, which ran for one season on MTV, as well as a stint as a judge on the Australian version of The Mass Singer, on which she was let go for allegedly pulling the same antics she pulled on the docuseries. She also recently had another mini renaissance when she starred in a Netflix Christmas movie. I remember people were really excited and celebrating her comeback, but she's kind of faded already. But despite this, I think this series is just incredible. It's not a fun watch per se, but it's so gripping and gritty and offers a glimpse into stardom like no other show out there. Mostly, I think, because Lindsay didn't really have any control over it. It didn't feel produced, and Lindsay definitely was not producing herself. I would be curious to see what a project like this would look like today, because as mentioned in my section on sobriety, I think viewers would prefer a little more empathy be shown to Lindsay today than they would have required when the docuseries was created. This was shot in 2013 and 2014, so we were still years out from Paris Hilton's documentary or the Free Britney movement. There was still a bloodlust to see pretty stars behave badly and fall from grace that I don't think exists in the same way now. I think attitudes on addiction have also shifted more to a disease model rather than a moral failing, especially in light of the opioid epidemic, which brought serious addiction closer to a lot of people's homes. I don't know, maybe it would go similarly, but I really don't think so, and I always like to notice and point out when I think there's some sign of societal progress. So yeah, if you haven't seen the Lindsay Docky series or it's been a while since you last watched it, I really encourage you to seek it out. Let me know what you thought of the series, or even just Lindsay Lohan in general. I'm interested to hear from people that were too young to appreciate her initial rise to fame. Is she totally irrelevant now? Let me know. I'm kind of at a place where I feel for her. I can see how much she struggled living in the public eye and feeling like she was wasn't given real boundaries or guidance. And I get why that can make you act out, but at a certain point, she just becomes exhausting. She acts so selfishly that I can see why people got sick of it and why her career completely stalled. She showed a complete lack of professionalism. I get that she has extra challenges, but she's been given so many opportunities and wake-up calls, and at some point, we've all got to take responsibility for our own life and future, despite whatever is in our past. Maybe she's happier living a more private life. She's recently gotten married and announced she's having a baby, so hopefully she's found peace in whatever way that manifests for her. For my Housewives fans, sorry to go off book with this one. I'm just so into this series and wanted to try something a little new, but don't worry, I'm not changing the direction of my channel or anything. I've got something really big I'm working on. It'll be out shortly after a certain trailer drops, to give you a hint. If you like this video, and more importantly, you like The Real Housewives, be sure to subscribe. If you don't watch Housewives, you should. You can watch my video on where to start each franchise if you want to give it a go. Then come back and watch the rest of my videos and subscribe. Definitely give this video a thumbs up so the algorithm can spread my video far and wide. If you want to connect on social media, I'm on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. My ads are deeply super fish. I'll link them below. But for now, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!